What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to automatically fill word files with Python to automate things like creating contracts or invitations to events. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to automatically fill word files using Python today. And this can be useful for a number of different use cases. So for example, you can create contracts in a customized way on demand, just providing some information using a template and then having a customized contract, instead of having to write everything yourself or having to fill out the placeholders manually. You can also use this to send customized invitations to potential clients or customers or business connections. So if you have a database of a 1000 people, it makes sense to automate this procedure instead of opening the template and manually copy pasting information from a CSV file or a database, for example, and many more things. So you can use Python to automate the completion of word templates, the filling of word templates. And this is what we're going to do in this video today. For this, we're going to need to have the package Python docx installed. So you're going to open up your command line, you're going to say pip or pip three install Python dash docx. And we're also going to use pandas because we want to read from a CSV file later on. So we're going to install these two packages. And once you have them installed, what you also need is some sort of template, you don't have to use the template I use, you can just design your own template. It's a very simple one that I have here. So I can open it up here, I'm going to open it with only office since I'm on Linux. But this is my basic template. So some grand neural nine event, you can see dear salutation, first name, last name, it's been a while since our last interaction on last contacted. So everything that you see here with square brackets is a placeholder. Um, you can see, we hope all is well at company name. Uh, we are delighted to and blah, blah, blah. And then you have again company name and again company name. And then you have the static information here, which is the event. Of course, you can also make this variable if you want to have it even more customizable. But for now, this is going to be the same event every time the same dress code every time. And it's just going to be a different invitation based on who we're sending this to. So we're going to learn how to fill out this template. And we're going to do it first, just with one particular uh, set of information here. So we're not going to use a database or a CSV file, we're going to just go with one person that we want to do this, and then we're going to uh, do this for and then we're going to automate this with a CSV file. So we're going to start by from docx importing the document. Uh, and the idea now is to go through the word document and to find specific placeholders. Now the reason we use square brackets, and you can design a placeholders, however you want, you can do it with curly brackets or something else. The reason I use square brackets is because certain words can occur um, in the document without square brackets, and they're not placeholders. So for example, if I use company as a placeholder, um, the problem is that company might occur as a word, and it's not a placeholder. So if I replace all occurrences of company, I might also replace the word company, which is not a placeholder. Whereas if I put this in square brackets, it's obviously a placeholder, this is not natural text, it will occur in the contract usually, uh, or in the invitation in this case, usually. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to define a function, fill invitation. And this function is going to take the template path as a parameter, it's going to take the output path as a parameter, and it's going to take the data as dictionary here as a parameter in the form of a dictionary as a parameter. We're going to define doc equal to document, and we're going to just load the template path, whatever the template path is. Um, and then we're going to say now for each paragraph in the document dot paragraph. So paragraph basically is uh, when we open this file up again, a paragraph is just one section here. So we basically have this is a paragraph, this is a paragraph, every single thing here is a paragraph every every time you have a line break. Um, and the idea now is that every paragraph has multiple runs. Now in this case, we only have one run per paragraph. So all of this is one run. The idea is that I can, of course, change certain styling here. So I can mark this, I can highlight it, I can change the, the boldness, I can change the size, the font, everything. And then I would have multiple runs per paragraph. In this case, we can just do the runs individually. Um, the only thing that you would have to keep in mind is that if you have, for example, different runs and you split the placeholders, you're not going to be able to easily detect them. So if you're looking for a company name in runs, but then you have one run here, and another run here, it's not going to find company name. In this case, you would have to replace the full text of the paragraph, we're going to see what this looks like here in a second. But now we're just going to say for paragraph in doc.paragraphs, 
and we're going to say for key value in data dot items. This is what we're going to provide here in a second our data. We're going to say if the key is part of the paragraph text. So this is the content of the paragraph for run in paragraph dot run. We're just going to say run dot text equals run dot text replace. And then we're going to replace the key with a value. We're going to see why this makes sense here once we have the dictionary. Now, as I said, if you have some problems with this, if the run uh, produces problems, what you can do is you can also just say directly uh, paragraph dot text is equal to paragraph dot text dot replace and then key value. This is also a possibility. So if you don't want to deal with runs, if you don't have any formatting, any formatting issues, you can just go with that. Um, we're going to go with the runs here. It doesn't really matter. So this is now the replacement code. The only thing we need to do now is we need to say doc dot save output path. Nothing too fancy. All right. So with this function now, what we can do is we can define, let's define a main section here. So if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then what we're going to do is we're going to say the data is a dictionary. And what we want to do now here is as the key, we always want to put the placeholder of the template. So let's open it up again. Or do I have it open up? No. Okay. Uh, let's open it up and see all the placeholders that I have in here. I have salutation, first name, last name, last contacted and company name. That is everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say salutation is going to be in this case, Mr. Then we're going to have um, first name is going to be Mike. Then last name is going to be Smith. Then come on. Then the last contacted and I think we also had date. Don't we also have date? No, we don't have date because date is static. Okay. <clears throat> so last contacted is the last time you spoke to that person or messaged that person. Let's say it's October uh, 1st, 2023. And then we're going to say, finally, company name is, I don't know, Smith Inc. or something like that. So this is the data and this just defines which placeholder is mapped to which value. And then all we have to do now is we have to say template path and our case is just template doc x output path is just going to be filled dot doc x. And then we're going to say fill invitation uh, template path output path data. And now if I run this, what I get is an exception because of course, paragraph dot runs. And now it works. So I can open this in files, I can double click it. And what you see now, hopefully is there you go, uh, a customized invitation. Dear Mr. Mike Smith, it's been a long while since our last interaction on October 1st, 2023. We hope all is well at Smith Inc and so on and so forth, you can see that the placeholders are now filled with the actual values. Now, this does not make a lot of sense if you do it like this, if you define the data manually, it makes a lot of sense. However, if you do it automatically using a database or a CSV file with context. So here now I have a CSV file with 20 contexts. This is generated by ChatGPT. So instead of just copying this, you can just go to ChatGPT and tell it you need a CSV file with those columns, first name, last name, last contacted company salutation, tell it you want to have 20 entries or more. Um, and this is now the data that I have here. So this is a database. And this is potentially this contains potentially up to 1000 2000 3000 different people that I want to contact and invite. So why would I do it manually? Why would I open the template, fill in the information and then uh, save it, I can just use this automation that we just learned about. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have the same function fill invitation, but we're going to now generate the invitations from the CSV file. So we're going to add a separate function here, which we're going to talk, uh, which we're going to name generate invitations from CSV. 
and we're going to put here the CSV path, and we're going to put here the template path, which we're going to then further pass into the fill invitation function. Um, but what we're going to do now basically is we're going to load the CSV file as a data frame, which is of course why we need to have pandas imported. So import pandas as PD. We're going to say the data frame is equal to PD read CSV file, and we're going to read context.csv. And what we do now is we say for index and row in data frame iter row. So we're going to iterate over the rows. And we're going to create this data dictionary that we have down here uh, for all of the entries. So I'm going to just copy this here. And instead of having these fixed values, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have the data frame values here. So we're going to say row first underscore name, and then comma, and then we're going to say row. Oh, actually, this is first name. This is salutation. This is last name. So row, last name, and then we have, oh, come on. Then we have the row last contacted. And finally, we have row company. Yeah, just company, not company name, right? Yeah. All right, so this is now for every row, we create such a data dictionary. And all we have to do now is we have to say output path is equal to, and then we can create a file name structure, something like invitation underscore, and let's use here index now just to have different names. Um, or let's say index plus one, so we don't have a invitation zero doc x. Uh, what's the problem here? Expected int got hashable instead. Why is that? Index should be a number, actually. I think it should work. Let's see if it works or if I'm missing something. Um, but then we're going to say just fill invitation, template path, output path, data. So we're just going to call the function. We're basically doing the exact same thing as here. The only difference is that we're doing it for each row of the data frame. So all we have to do down here now is we have to say CSV path is equal to uh, contacts.csv. We're actually, yeah, we need to use the CSV path here. I mean, we don't have to, we can also just use contact CSV directly. Uh, and now we say template path is again equal to templates doc x and then finally, generate invitations CSV path template path. So that would be the automation. If I run this now, hopefully, I get 20 invitations. As you can see here, I can open them in files, I can open any one of them. And here now I can see the invitation for Mr. Robert Brown of Brown Company Corporation. Uh, now we can see here the date is formatted differently. But this is just because the date is like that in the CSV file. If I want it uh, in a different way, of course, I can change the CSV file, or I can reformat it uh, programmatically. Uh, but you can see now we have this invitation, I can go back now, I can open another one, open in files, there you go. And here now you can see, okay, Mr. Brian Gray, Gray Grains, and then you can see here, this is the last time contacted. Um, and yeah, so you can see that this makes a lot of sense. If you create invitations, of course, you can then go further and create, uh, or convert all of them into a PDF file or you can also automatically send them via email. So you might have a full management system where you just click a button and you send out invitations to all these people automatically as PDF files. Uh, this can be in integrated in a larger pipeline or procedure. But this is fundamentally how you fill in word files using Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.